welcome to Cafe Racer Garage, I am Dan, and in this video we're gonna build a headlight bracket. This style of bracket is something that I've wanted to do for a while now. As you can see behind me, I don't wanna to give too much away. Let me show you how I did it. The top and bottom triple clamps on this bike are something that I haven't actually built myself. Everything else on this bike is pretty much gonna be custom made. And they're from Cognito Moto. I'll leave a link to the exact ones that I'm using on this bike in the description. Because Cognito Moto are actually based in the US, the threads on them are actually Imperial. So I wanted them to match everything else on the bike, which is metric. So I just re-tapped them with a metric thread. And now they're M8 by 1.25 for anyone that wanted to know. I have absolutely no idea how I want this to look and that's why I'm using 2.4 millimeter TIG wire. It's one of the cheapest ways to get the design look that you're after and then you can move to the more expensive material that you actually want to make it out of. I'm using my sheet metal roller here to curve the solid stainless steel round bar. Don't be discouraged if you don't have these kind of machines because you can easily do it like I used to do it before I had these machines which is just pretty much bending it over something. Just find the curve that you need, but just remember you're gonna get spring back. I'm putting a little bit more information in this video with explanations on how to do things. And if you prefer this style of content as opposed to the music in the background, leave me a comment and let me know which one you prefer. Unfortunately, it didn't quite work out as planned. This curve is nice, but that side has a bit of a flat spot and I don't even like that design. So let's start again. Before we get too ahead of ourselves, let me just quickly show you how you can make these with some fairly basic tools and then we'll get back to making the actual bracket. So the tools you're gonna need to do this are two different size drill bits. Depending on the bolt you're using, you need one for the head and one for the shank of the bolt, which is this one here and you need a piece of solid, whatever size you're gonna use, probably five millimeters larger than the head of the bolt. And then you just need to drill a hole. The first hole is the small one. So you could do an even smaller hole, which is your pilot hole, straight through the center, which I'll show you this all in a second. The other tools you're gonna to need is a drill and an angle grinder. The drill press is going to be a lot easier to use than this drill, but you can still probably get away with using this. And also the angle grinder you use, you'll probably just need a grinding disc and a flapper disc. First up, just get the piece of material and try and find your center. Finding the center point to do your first drill hole is going to be probably your first challenge. Just imagine this being the same size as this, so it's a blown up version. All you have to do is find something that is about the center line of the piece that you're going to be using. Put that pretty much on the bench as so. To make it easier, we'll just mark a little bit of black on there for you. And then just simply make a mark with a scribe or anything you have and then just keep rolling it around and just keep doing the same thing as you go around you'll find a common center point as you can see right there and that'll give you as close as you can possibly get to that center you can use a center punch like this just to get that perfect dot in the center and then just do a small little pilot hole and away you go just in case you do drill this off center, you may want to get yourself a slightly larger diameter than you actually need so you can fix it up later. But I'm doing this out of aluminium to show you how to do it just as a demonstration, but you'll probably want to use mild steel or stainless steel. Once you've found your center, drill your pilot hole and then your main hole that goes all the way through for the shank of the bolt and then use the largest drill, but make sure you don't go too deep, just deep enough for the head of the bolt. If you're anything like me, trying to get that drill to go perfectly in the center there could be a little bit of a challenge. And if that happens, I'll show you how to correct it. So all you have to do now is get a bolt that is reasonably long, put a nylock nut on the end of it, do that up nice and tight. If you're making yours out of stainless steel or mild steel, use your grinding disc first and then finish off with a flapper disc. But I'm just gonna use the flapper disc because I've got aluminium. Just run the grinder and your drill at the same time and then just keep working until you get it perfectly centered. And hopefully yours turns out something similar to this. And if it doesn't on the first attempt, just keep going because the first one will probably be a bit of a learning curve. 
I really like the radius of this here. I know I'm going to get a bit of spring back when I actually bend it around that. However, that's actually the dolly stand holder for these little guys here from Heron Forbes. Let's bend around that and see how we go. This is the last little bit of steel I have for this. And if it doesn't work, I'll have to go and get some more. If you're into building motorcycles, a hydraulic press is something that's gonna come in handy quite often. But if you don't have one, you can simply bend this round bar over the edge of a bench or in a vise. If you're not familiar with some of the head-eye bracket videos that I've done in the past, I'll leave a playlist right at the end of this video. I've made them from scrap, I've made them from stainless, I've made them from plastic. Not just the brackets themselves, but also the clamp that goes around the fork tube. My preference for all of the electrical componentry I can possibly get, including the turn signals, the Mo unit, the Mo switches, the Mo button, everything is from Motor Gadget. I love their stuff because it's top quality. I'm currently working on a video to show the breakdown of how to wire a motorcycle as simple as I possibly can for anyone having trouble with actually doing the wiring. So bear with me, that'll be coming out fairly soon. Well, I don't like it, it's not working, and I'm gonna change it. And I went to all that effort of making those little brass nuts and the other little stainless section to put the turn signals in, and I don't even think I'm gonna use them. I might try to use them, but I don't know. We'll see how we go. It kind of looks a little bit goofy from the front as it sits down like that, so I'm going to mess around with a few more ideas and see what I can come up with. It can be quite tempting to go ahead and use something like this, especially if you've spent so much time building it. And because I'm building this and staring at it the whole time, it's really hard to sort of see from another set of eyes. And that's why what I do is I send pictures of this from a different angles and off to my friends and they come back with what they think would look good. And that's an awesome way to design something. I haven't fully welded it out yet purely because I want to actually weld it up with silica bronze filler rods and I don't actually have any. So I've got to go and grab some. And then when it's completely finished, I'm going to post an image of this on my Instagram. So make sure you follow me on Instagram. I just feel like it's going to be a nice contrast between the stainless steel and the bronze. And that's going to be the theme throughout this entire bike. I hope this video has inspired you to build something on your bike. And don't forget to check out that playlist I mentioned earlier of all the different headlight brackets that I built.